So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and this is The Way to Be. Today we're taking a look inside the beehive. All the sights and sounds that you're seeing and hearing are from the bees themselves. And this is a great way for beginners to acquaint themselves with what they're looking at when they see honeycomb. So give me seven minutes of your time and uh, I'll cover it really quick because we're looking at brood right here. Open cells. This is after eggs have hatched and we've got what's referred to as larvae. If there's just one, it's larva. So we have lots of larvae. The minute the egg hatches, uh, the bees go to work. That's the nurse bees feeding them. That's why we see a bunch of liquid around these tiny little C-shaped grubs. And there are eggs on the lower right here. And there are eggs for three days. And what's the yellow stuff going on here? That is pollen that the bees have brought in. And of course, it's convenient to put it right next to the nursery where the nurse bees can consume it and then produce the resources necessary to grow out the larvae. These are eggs. It's a black plastic foundation here, which is a recent question I received. What color wax foundation would you put inside a hive? This clearly shows that if it's black, you'll see eggs and larvae very easily. Once you start to see them, you'll notice them everywhere. So this is a normal distribution inside the hive. At the top, the uppermost areas, they tend to store honey. Today is July the 6th. So this serves as a video bee log for me regarding this colony of bees. And you're looking at capped honey. So that means it's finished and the bees wrap that up by capping it. Some people also ask, why is some of it yellow or white? and the other parts of the capping is dark. Well, that's because in this case, the bees are putting more beeswax over the capping. Sometimes people may suggest that there's air under the cappings, and that's true, that can leave it looking white or lighter. But in this case, you'll notice that it's where the bees build up the wax the most. So these are storekeeper bees that are putting honey and nectar into these cells. They dry it down. Now at this particular point, they're not doing a lot of drying. We would know that they were because they'd be fanning away. The time of day when you want to look at your frames is also very important. If you notice, there are not a lot of bees covering these cells, which would block us from seeing what's going on inside. So at two o'clock in the afternoon on a nice hot day, look at this. We have older larvae and they are near capping. Once they're capped, they're considered the pupa state. So once they get capped, they're no longer being fed by the nurse bees. They are just under those cappings and there they will remain until the day they emerge as adult worker bees. So you don't really see baby bees. Some people often ask, is that a baby bee? No, it's an adult, but they have just emerged and they're fuzzy and they have a lot of extra hair. Now that we go to another lower frame, we see a lot more pollen. Now what we really like to see here is a lot of diversity in pollen coloration. That means that the bees are getting pollen from the flowers and that they're getting it from different sources. So diversity, there's a drone male bee right dead center there. And also we have some cells that are empty. Now when they bring in nectar, they pass that on to storekeeper bees that move it around the hive. When they bring in pollen on their hind legs, the actual foragers deposit that in the cells. So the lighter colored, more chalky looking pollen is the freshest and newest, and the pollen that has a shiny surface has been there for a while. And we've observed that the bees like to consume and use the pollen, the bee bread, when it's around 48 hours old, that means it's been fermenting a little bit and helps with their digestion. So the nurse bees are the consumers of that. And then these nurse bees feed the queen, feed the developing larvae, and so on. Also, we're looking at beeswax here. Now this is called brace comb. This is what connects the bottom edge of a foundationless frame. That means that the bees drew out this wax completely from the top bar, and then look at all the openings that they leave along the bottom edge. And this is the lowest box. This is the lowest frame. So with foundationless comb, we often find that they don't connect it all the way to the bottom of the wooden frame. And they have lots of passageways here and movement. There are bees grooming one another here. This also happens to be the closest portion 
to the entrance of the hive. So we see a lot of waggle dancing off and down here. You see bees grooming. There's a lot of coming and going here. And you'll see them dragging dead bees out and so on. And that's a fuzzy bee right there, which may be new. Remember, there are no real baby bees. They're the same size, full grown. That one's getting groomed there. You'll also sometimes see them temporarily deposit nectar here. So you'll see shiny cells full of nectar, slant, honey that's under production. And during the nighttime, the storekeeper bees can move that to other cells in other parts of the hive. So it doesn't necessarily stay put. We're already back up here at the eggs. Clear progression from eggs to hatched eggs, which then are again singular larva, plural larvae. And then as we move up, notice there's no queen excluder in this hive. And that's because if you have a single entrance down below, the progression from larvae and uh, developing brood up through the hive to nothing but honey at the top is pretty standard and predictable. So this is the connection between two frames. Notice the brace comb that they put there too. Sometimes you may see larger drone cells between the frames. And that's why when you pull your hive boxes apart, you'll sometimes panic a little bit if you're a new beekeeper and you may see some white developing pupa and those are normally drones that were in the larger cells in between the frames. Now, of course, to do this observation, we pulled nothing apart. So the bees are very calm. And of course, we're finishing off at the very top with capped beeswax. The other thing that happens this time of year is a lot of new beekeepers. Remember, we're in the first week of July. They'll look at the honey and they'll get very excited to see capped honey. And they'll think, I need to take that off. But I would suggest that you still leave it for your bees, depending on where you live, to make sure that they have a surplus. This is hive number 21, and we've looked it over and made our observations for the bee log. I hope it was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Take a look at your bees. This is The Way to Bee.